Hello everyone! Um, so today I decided I wanted to do a fun eye makeup look and it's actually something I've never really tried before with bold colors and an interesting pattern that I've never tried. So I figured it would be great to do it on here and have you guys be the first to see how it goes. Um, also, I wanted to talk about airbags and a lot of the chemistry that goes behind it, some of the physics and just some of the common sense stuff that goes behind it. So let's get started. So I already put on sunscreen, I already did my eyebrows, and now it's time to start on the eyes. So as always, I'm gonna be taking my primer. Now specifically this time around, I wanna make sure the primer is in a very um, specific spot because of the bold color that I'm gonna be using. So I really want this primer to intensify that color. I'm gonna be putting a lot of the color here and then also, because of the way my eye falls, I think I'm gonna be putting some of the color up here also. Okay, this looks really silly right now. Um, I promise that, well, I can't promise it'll turn out well, but I promise I'm gonna try to make it turn out well. But in the meantime, let's kind of dim this out just a little bit so that we don't have really harsh lines of white. Okay, now I have the primer pretty much over my whole eyelid, but it's more concentrated in the places that I placed it first, which is important because that's where I'm gonna be putting the color. So, I'm actually gonna be taking my Bird of Paradise palette and I'm gonna be taking this color, Tweet, right here. So I really like this color. I've used it once before and it just turned out really nice, but I think it needs to be applied in a very specific way since it's such an intense color. And I don't want it to fall on my clothes, so let's see how that goes. And I'm just gonna be placing it wherever I put the primer. So now that I have a second of just doing the same thing over again and having you guys watch, let's start talking about airbags. So let's get started with the physics of things. When you're driving your car, you have a certain velocity and velocity is almost exactly speed, but the difference is velocity is measured in a specific direction. Um, and if you've taken physics, you really know the difference between speed and velocity. And if you haven't taken physics, just think of velocity as a similar to speed, okay? And then you also have mass. So you have like how heavy your car is. That's more similar to weight, but if you haven't taken physics, you can kind of make those synonymous. So mass is like weight and velocity is like speed. And so you have those two in an equation and when you square the velocity, you multiply it by the mass and then you multiply it by half, you get something called kinetic energy. And simply put, kinetic energy is the energy of something that's moving. Okay, that's a very simple way to explain it. Um, but in this case, it, it's a helpful way to understand what's going on. So if you think about it logically, when your car's moving, and if, God forbid, you get into an accident and you hit a wall, for example, then in order to stop, you need to overcome all that kinetic energy, okay? And that's pretty much how an accident works involving physics. Um, and if you think about it, the faster you go, the worse your accident's gonna be because you have to overcome a lot more kinetic energy. And it's because of that velocity being squared. So the graph, instead of it looking linear like this, like here is going at zero miles per hour and here's 100 miles per hour. So your, your accident damage wouldn't be linear. It's gonna be exponential, okay? So the faster you're going, the exponentially worse your accident is gonna be. So that's why I make sure to follow the speed limit rules. Not only that, but it's illegal to go over them, <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, anyway, so that's important to understand when we're talking about accidents because you have to overcome that kinetic energy in order to stop. Now we have something wonderful to help us not be damaged in an accident and that's called our seatbelts. So our seatbelts, they hold our body back from being thrown into the windshield, breaking the windshield and onto the street. Uh, pretty morbid, but that's what would happen if we weren't wearing our seatbelts and we were going fast enough and got to an accident. And our seatbelts protect a lot of us, okay? But they don't protect our head. 
and our head is pretty heavy it's heavy enough to be able to keep going at that speed that your car was going at before it crashed and you know keep going so it's really important to find something to protect our head in an accident this is uh, a lot more morbid explaining it out loud than it was in my head <laughs> but this is real life and it's something that we need to consider when we think about these things so in order to protect our head in an accident, we have something called airbags. Now, airbags are uh, placed in different areas in your car, depending on what car you have. And um, specifically the one that's on your steering wheel, that's the one that protects the driver's head. Um, so there's a salt inside airbags, and that salt is called sodium azide. And sodium azide, it consists of some nitrogen and some other chemicals. Now what happens when you get into an accident is there's this little detector that can detect, oh, the stopping is much faster than the speed and something's wrong here. So that detector will send a signal and there's a little, I don't, I don't think it's called a fuse. I can't remember the term that it is, but it's something that's gonna take that signal from the detector and it's gonna start heating up. And once that heats up, it heats up the salt, the sodium azide. And when that sodium azide is heated up, it starts releasing a gas. And that gas is nitrogen gas, N2. And nitrogen gas starts to fill up the airbag. So then it deploys, okay? So you have this big bag that deploys. And if you've ever been in an accident or seen an accident, you notice that there's this powder over the bag. And that's talcum powder, at least in most cases. And that powder is there in order to help the airbag open smoothly and evenly okay so it'll open all at the same time and we'll have a smooth surface for your head to hit um but also another thing is if your head hit that airbag and didn't and the airbag didn't absorb that energy from your head hitting it your head would just bounce back and you'd probably be worse off than if you were without the airbag so another thing that they have on the airbags are little holes around it so once it's deployed, your head hits it as soon as it's deployed, and then the energy from your head hitting that bag starts to be released by the gas releasing out of the holes. And so once that happens, the airbag, it starts to deflate and your head was saved. Um, and you, the airbag should be completely deflated by the time the whole vehicle stops. So that's the physics, the chemistry, and some of the logic behind how airbags work. And it's such a cool invention. I mean, I don't know if cool is the best word to use in a situation when we're talking about accidents, but I think it's great that people have thought of effective ways to save us in a situation like that. And in fact, airbags do help. There have been studies where it's very effective in helping the outcome of an accident. But of course, as everything, it can be more effective and it could be more safe because some people have actually gotten eye injuries and ear injuries from the airbag, but their lives were saved. So it was effective, but it was a little bit dangerous on the side. So there are studies being done to help it be more safe. And I think there's even um, different placements of airbags in different cars where you can have one coming out the side, um, even the passengers, you have some. So they're really trying to work hard to make sure that it's as safe and effective as possible. And another thing is you don't wanna have small children in the front seat because of the airbags, it can actually cause a lot more head injury than actually helping the head. And because a small child um, is positioned the way that they are, the airbag can actually lift them up from the seat and have them hit the top of the car. So it's not safe to have a child that's too small sitting in the front seat. Also, just because we have airbags doesn't mean that we should stop using our seatbelts. In fact, like I was saying before, the seatbelts help our bodies be safe and the airbags help our heads be safe. So if we have one without the other, we're not helping our entire self be safe from the accident. So it's really important to pair both of them. Also, if you get into an accident and your airbag is deployed, you actually are not allowed to drive your car until you get that airbag fixed 
so that it can be used in the future if you do have another accident. So even though it's not the most fun topic to talk about, it's very interesting how physics, chemistry, and all these things come together in order to help us be safer in everyday life. It's a very um, simple way that we can see science helping us in our common world. And you don't have to be a scientist. You don't even have to have studied any science at all. You could have just taken geology just because that was the easiest science, which I don't know, I haven't taken geology. It probably isn't that easy because it's science and science isn't easy in general. <laughs> But anyway, I digress. Um, even if you know nothing about science, it's really cool to be able to know these things that science provides us in our everyday life. Um, and most people drive cars, so now you can look at your car and look at it in a new way. Um, so yeah, very interesting. Now back to the makeup. I don't really know exactly what I'm doing. My goal though is I wanted to have um, some of the color down here and then some up here because I'm gonna be putting my eyeliner in those areas. Um, I might have to go grab a Q-tip just to clean out this little area that has some fallout from the eyeshadow. And then of course when I open my eyes, everything blends together because that's just how my eyes are shaped, yay. I probably could have gone higher up, but Let's just see how this goes and work with it as best as we can. So I'm gonna run over and get a Q-tip and I'll be right back. So I've got my Q-tip and I actually didn't wet it because I don't wanna create harsh lines. I just wanna kind of take away this excess powder that has fallen here. Oh, and that's actually doing a really good job. Now another thing, I kinda wanna shape this better. I want to take off some of the powder in this area because I want it to be smaller here and then get wider. And then same thing with up here. Kind of wanted to get this smaller and then this be wider over here. Okay, I think I have a really good shape for this now. Um, and I cleaned out some of the inner area. And now I just want to make sure that everything's blended nice because I don't really want a sharp line. I just want it to be blended really nicely. And honestly, I'm okay with it being a sharp line in here, but I do want it, want it to be blended out at the top. Okay, and finally what I'm gonna do is take my eyeliner and try to make this look everything that I envisioned. Um, let's see how this goes. <laughs> So first I'm gonna be taking a small amount of eyeliner for the inner corner, okay? And then I'm gonna make it thicker on the outside. Okay, now that I have my eyeliner at the base, I'm gonna be going out of my comfort zone and bringing it up into here, okay? Uh, I feel like I'm gonna regret that because it looks decent right now, but it definitely needs that boldness and okay. here goes nothing yeah so I went ahead and connected them but it's still not looking great and that's because it's making some weird triangle shape so what I'm gonna do is make this bottom liner a lot thicker There we go. This is definitely an interesting look. So I'm trying to make it thinner at the top, but I'm very heavy handed. If all else fails, use your acrylic nails. <laughs> That rhymes! Oh my goodness! I feel like this is a classic example of, oh, my eyeliner's not working. I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker to make it work. And then you're left with Amy Winehouse, which is great, but if it's not what you're going for, 
yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. But I'm just gonna do it on this side and see how it looks all together. I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> um, I feel like I can salvage it, but I'm just a little confused on why it didn't look perfect on the first try. Actually, that's probably why it's not perfect because it's my first try going kind of out of my comfort zone and doing some interesting shapes on my eyes. And I don't have the best eyelids for this, so that's gonna be my excuse. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that color again, Tweet, and I'm gonna put it on my lower lids. I'm not gonna be doing the rest of my face today because honestly, I'm not in the mood for it. And also I'm gonna be wearing a mask and I just don't wanna deal with that. So I'm just doing my eyes. They need to be bold and take away focus from the rest of this mess. I didn't know it was possible to change my eye shape so much. I no longer have like almond shape. They're very round right now. It's quite interesting. I'm just gonna put this on my bottom lashes. Okay. I'm gonna slap some falsies on and put on a very special lip color. And I'll come back and see how it is. And if I don't come back, it's because it looks terrible. But I'll try my best to make it look decent for you guys. See you in a second. I don't know what's going on with this look. It's okay though, like, would I go outside with this? Yes, I would. Um, would I wear it to a special event? Probably not. First of all, these eyelashes are insane. And I got them at Walmart, okay? Um, they were for my Jessica Rabbit costume and I probably won't be wearing them again now that I see how intense they are. Um, and it's kind of lifting off right here. We're just gonna ignore that right now. Um, yeah, and this lipstick is incredible. In fact, for my next video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the whole line of lipsticks that I got that don't come off when you wear a mask. That's right, they don't come off. And I'm gonna try fun looks like this more often just so I could get better at them. Cause right now it's, it's suffering a little bit, but it's going in the right, right, I can't even speak, but it's going in the right direction. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. If you recreate this look, tag me so I can see how you did it and how you redeemed it. And I hope you guys learned a lot about airbags and a lot about what goes behind it and you give more thought about making sure you wear your seatbelt, making sure your airbags work and just making sure you're safe overall and learning about science because it's fun and it's applicable. So anyway, have a great week and I'll see you guys on Thursday. Bye.